Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Flux Maintainer track. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how you can use Flux to amplify your GitOps setup with OCI Cosine. I'm Sanskar. I'm a Flux and Flagger maintainer. I work at Weaveworks. And my name is Kingdon. I'm also a Flux maintainer, and I work at Weaveworks. Um, this is a maintainer track, so I'm going to assume most of you are familiar with Flux. For those of you who are not, let me do a quick intro. Flux is a CD tool, which lets you do GitOps for your Kubernetes clusters. What that means is you can deploy your applications in a Kubernetes cluster in a GitOps fashion by storing them in a Git repository or a Helm repository. Uh, C, uh, it's a CNCF graduated project. Uh, we achieved graduation status last year. Uh, we have multiple integrations with Terraform and AWS CloudFormation, and there is a free and open source UI you can use as well to view your Flux resources. And we are being used by companies like AWS and GitLab for their own GitOps offering, as well as uh, companies like Orange and DT for their uh, 5G deployments. Um, so good news, everyone. Flux finally has a GA release. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, Please clap. What that means is that the core GitOps APIs, that are the Git repository API, the customization API, and the receiver API, are all considered v1, which means that there are going to be no breaking changes. So you're going to upgrade. You can upgrade those APIs whenever you want at your wish. Um, Flux, if you don't know, is built of multiple components and multiple APIs. Uh, we like to evolve and uh, iterate on these APIs at our own fashion, so that we can give the best uh, experience to you users. What that means is certain APIs are still not considered GA, which means they might have breaking changes. For example, Helm and OCI. Uh, Helm is considered close to GA. We are working very hard on it. It's tricky to get it right because Helm is Helm. Uh, so it's, uh, it's in the pipeline. Uh, there's also OCI repository, which is a relatively new API, uh, which lets you fetch sources from uh, OCI registries. Uh, and then there is the image automation uh, APIs. And then there's also the notification API, which lets you do all sorts of alerting and uh, updates to slacks and stuff. OK, so the basics of Helm with Flux. Uh, you have your Helm repository CRD. You have your three CRDs that each map to a particular artifact in the cluster. The Helm repository has an index.yaml. Uh, Helm chart is an instance of that chart. So if you know about how Helm repositories have worked historically, that makes some sense. It'll make more sense as we go on. The Helm controller with the source controller together uh, apply the Helm release in the Kubernetes API. And it's using the Helm SDK under the hood. So uh, everything is compatible with the Helm CLI. If you're using Helm already, it's a seamless transition. Uh, also, the uh, notification controller is involved so that we can send alerts when things happen. Um, and on the right, you see there are various places that charts can come from, uh, Harbor, or uh, GitHub, or uh, that's Chart Museum on the bottom there. So these are the resources. Uh, the Helm repository resource on the left, we said maps to that index.yaml in the legacy version. This is our legacy Helm release and repository. Uh, so on the right, you see the source ref points at that Helm repository. And we have selected a particular chart since um, Legacy Helm repositories can store many charts and many versions. So we select a version. We're using a Semver wildcard so that we get the latest version within a range. And there's uh, other configuration that you can do. But um, this, is, this is the basics. Um, so all of this has been working fine. Uh, but we have continuously run into issues by all of you is saying that Helm acts funky or there are certain problems. It's, sometimes it's too slow. And from what we have seen, majority of these issues can be tracked down to one root problem is the fact that index.yaml just does not scale. The approach of having to store all your charts, uh, chart information in one file is just not a very scalable approach. Um, there are several reasons for this. Uh, first of all, it's because it's a YAML file, and YAML parsing is just slow. Uh, Matt Farina is a Helm maintainer uh, who recently did a benchmark test comparing YAML parsing and JSON parsing. Uh, and JSON parsing was significantly faster than YAML parsing. Um, so you have to parse the ent entire index.yaml file and then load it into memory and then look up the exact chart entry 
that you care about. That's a lot of CPU and RAM that you are uh, spending on that. Um, Helm repositories can contain hundreds of different charts, and those charts can have thousands of different versions. Uh, that means you can end up with a very, very big index.yaml file. And there is no way to filter out the charts or the versions that you don't care about. So you end up downloading a lot of stuff that you just don't need. Uh, lastly, verification requires provenance files. Uh, provenance files have been around for a long time, but the problem with provenance files is that it's another file that you need to care about. You need, it's another file you need to manage and distribute. Um, and these are not some theoretical predictions that we are making here. You can see these issues out in the wild. Bitnami has a very famous hem repository which has multiple hem charts. Recently, they had to purge like a significant amount of their index.yaml because CloudFront was not being able to serve it uh, due to traffic limits. Um, so what is the solution? Um, of course, it's like just get rid of the index.yaml file, right? Um, how do we do that? Uh, so how many of you are familiar with OCI? OK, that's, that's great. Um, so for those of you who don't know, OCI is this open governance body which standardizes everything related to images, how they are built, how they are packaged, how they are run. And for most importantly for us, uh, it's about how they are distributed. So there is a distribution spec which standardizes how container registries work and how they are supposed to distribute images. Uh, the best thing about uh, the OCI distribution spec is that it's supposed to be agnostic of content types, which means that it's built in mind keeping, uh, it's built, uh, keeping in mind uh, images, but you can store anything. You can store an MP3 file in there if you want to do. So if you can store an MP3 file, why can't you store a Helm chart, right? Uh, this is a meme that I stole from, uh, from Dan Lorenk on Twitter. Uh, it essentially boils down the OCI distribution spec into like this one image is where you give it some certain parameters and it gives you a URL which points to a tarball. And in our case, this tarball points to a Helm chart. So basically what you do is you can list the tags. So OCI, the OC, uh, distribution API has a very good API for listing tags and paginating and such stuff. So you can just list the tags you're worried about and you can just go and fetch the tarball that has your chart. Okay, so what does this look like in practice for users of Helm, um, people who package charts and publish them? So Helm package doesn't change at all. Uh, it generates a tarball and that has the chart YAML and the metadata in it. Helm push changes a little bit. Now we're pushing to an OCI URL. That's a registry on the right-hand side. And uh, there's, there's no third step unless you're uh, interested in provenance, which is that third step there. Uh, so cosine sign, we'll see in more detail. Uh, the spec has some changes. So we've added type OCI and the OCI prefix to the URL. We've added a provider here, and that's for um, authentication. Um, and on the right-hand side, we've also added provider cosine, which is for verification of the provenance. Right, so what are some of these benefits that you get when you use Flux, Helm, and OCI together? Uh, first thing right off the bat is the fact that you have all your apps, images, and signatures in one place. That is your container registry. You don't need to have 10 different tabs for your diff several different things, right? Uh, you get passwordless authentication and keyless integrity verification. Uh, we'll touch on that in the next few slides. And most importantly, you can get rid of your index.yaml, right? Which means that you don't have to spend as much as, as much CPU and RAM uh, as you were spending earlier, which translates into cost efficiency. You don't need to spend that much on ingress traffic, which again translates into cost efficiency. And you don't run into issues like Bitnami did with uh, network bottlenecks due to size. Um, OK, so let's talk about how passwordless authentication works uh, in this scenario. Um, so how it works is it uses something called workload identity. Workload identity is basically a cloud IAM role binding to a particular workload. Uh, what you do is you create a cloud IAM role um, which has access to your container registry. So let's say you're running on GKE and your container registry is on Google Artifact Registry. You can create a service account which has read access to that container registry and then you can bind that service account to the pod or the node that is running in your Kubernetes cluster. Now, this, now, since you have bound this role to your pod or node, that pod or node also has access to the container registry and can pull those images uh, from that registry. The benefit right off the bat here is to see like, the fact that there are no secrets, there are no static credentials, so you don't need to manage all of that dangerous stuff. Uh, Flux's implementation integrates seamlessly with Azure, AWS, and GCP. We're going to demo Azure today. Um, and uh, most importantly, it's native to Kubernetes. So workload identity uses uh, something called service accounts and OIDC projection. 
uh, which means that you don't step out of the Kubernetes world. You remain in, like, you deal with Kubernetes APIs. Right now, Flux's implementation only works at a global controller level, which means that if you wanted to, if you wanted to use different workload identities for in the same source controller instance, you would not be able to. But work is being done uh, right now to make that happen as well. So you can specify the service account name on the uh, Helm, uh, Helm chart object or the OCI repository object itself, and you can have multiple workload identities working working around on the same source controller. Um, you also get keyless verification. You get keyless integrity verification, which is great because you don't need to manage PGP private public key pairs, right? Which is, again, like another elimination of the need of secrets, which is great because secrets are dangerous, right? Um, how this works is that it's bound to your OIDC identity. So you sign your chart with cosign. Um, cosign is great because it uses OIDC behind the scenes, and all you have to do is sign in with Google or sign in with GitHub, and the signature is bound to your OIDC identity. Uh, Flux also supports uh, matching against OIDC uh, identities, uh, like the exact identity. Uh, it's not out in a release yet, but the PR has been merged, and the next release will have this feature as well. So what this means is that you can be super strict uh, about where your Helm charts are coming from. So for example, if we wanted to make sure that uh, it is indeed our GitHub workflow which generated this chart and pushed it off to your container registry, we can do that, right? So as you can see here, there's an issuer field which says token.actions.githubusercontent.com, which basically is saying that the issuer of this uh, authorization token uh, is the GitHub OIDC provider, and the subject is the, organ uh, is the repository that has the workflow which generated the package shot. OK, so this is the workflow that we're about to demonstrate. Um, in the beginning, a chart is pushed as it's released. And I described earlier the package step, uh, well, this happens in CI. Uh, Flux pulls it into the cluster automatically um, in the staging environment, and it deploys it. And you can do destructive tests because this is a staging environment. So we have, in this case, we're going to run Helm test only in the staging environment. You can have different configuration. Um, assuming everything goes OK, the next step triggers a dispatch uh, event that creates a pull request, which a uh, user can review and then merge. And uh, at that point, the upgrade proceeds in production in an attended fashion. So. Uh, OK, so we're probably a bit too early for the demo, but we have a few more slides uh, after this. So we're going to do the demo first, and then we're going to do a recap and reassess what is the state of Helm and Flux. OK, so let's do a demo of this entire workflow. So I'm going to first walk you through the file structure I have. Is this font size OK? OK, great. Um, so I have two clusters, staging and production. Um, so if you want to look at the file structure, there is clusters, and there's production, and there is staging. Both are pretty similar. They have Flux installed, and they have one app pod info. Um, so this is the Helm repository for the pod info registry. So as you can see, it points to a OCI registry, uh, which is hosted on ACR, Azure. And you can see provider uh, is Azure here. This, this basically tells Flux that uh, try to use the Azure workload entity to make to access the container registry so that you don't so that the user doesn't need to provide any kind of secrets with static credentials right um, so this is pretty much the same for both staging and production uh, so let's look at let's take a look at how the hen release looks like for staging um, so here as you can see it's pretty standard but you can if you notice here it says 7.0.x for version this dot x is basically a wildcard which basically says go uh, deploy the latest patch release so if the latest patch release is 7.0.2, deploy that. If it's 0.0.3, deploy that. Um, it also has the verification stuff here, which basically is saying that you make sure it's the GitHub IDC provider, which created the authorization token, and, and it's my repository here, which is the owner of this workflow. Um, we have a production hem release file here. The only difference between the production hem release file and the staging hem release file is the fact that the production is pinned to a particular version. There is no Semver wildcard here, right? Which is great, which is what we want. We don't want to deploy random stuff or like late, the latest release into production. We want to make sure that we know what we're deploying into production. That's why it's pinned to a particular version, and it can't move without our explicit approval. Right. Um, let's take a look at notifications. 
So this is a provider. Provider is basically a way of a contact, a way that Flux can contact other external systems and let them know about Flux events. And alerts are basically a way of creating a Flux event alert. So as you can see here, whenever a Helm upgrade succeeds for this particular Helm release, it's going to create an alert, and that alert is going to be sent to a GitHub dispatch provider. A GitHub dispatch provider lets us trigger workflows uh, based on certain events. And this is a GitHub workflow that we have. So this GitHub workflow basically gets triggered by the GitHub dispatch provider, right? And it's pretty standard. We don't, we're not doing anything revolutionary here. What we are basically, what the, the most important business logic here is the fact that we are getting the version from the alert. So whatever, uh, whatever is the latest version that got deployed in staging, so let's say that's 7.0.3 that got deployed in staging, we take that version and we use YQ to do some YAML manipulation, and we change the value of the version in the production HEM release file to that version. So we're basically changing the pinned version from 7.0.2 to 7.0.3 in the production HEM release file. And that's how we make sure that we never deploy the latest thing. We always make sure that whenever we do deploy a new thing, that's with our explicit approval. And then we go ahead and create a pull request with that change. OK, cool. So this was like the basic intro to the file structure. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, sorry. I'm going to go ahead and create a new chart version and push that. So I have a workflow. Uh, I have a GitHub workflow, which will, whenever there's a new tag version, it will basically create a chart and will push it off to Azure Container Registry. So let me just tag this here and push it. OK. Cool. So. Let's see. OK, cool. So it's, there's a GitHub workflow, which is running right now. Um, let's see what it's doing. OK. Uh, it's packaging the chart. Right now, it's logging into ACR. Cool. It signs the Helm chart. OK, so let's take a look at Azure. As you can see, there's a 7.0.4 uh, tagged chart here, and this is its signature here. Right, so now that there is a new chart in our container registry, what we expect from our clusters is that the new chart should be deployed in the staging cluster, right? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, let me just make sure I'm staging, let me stage, change to staging, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and reconcile the Helm chart in the staging cluster. Okay, cool, so as you can see, uh, Flux saw that there's a new version and it deployed 7.0.4 in staging. And we can verify that by doing a get hem release as well. Uh, right now it's uh, pending, it's in progress. Let's do that again. OK, cool. So now uh, staging is running 7.0.4 of our application, which is great. So now what this did was it created an event uh, which was sent to Flux's notification controller. And Flux took that notification uh, that it got, the alert that it got, and triggered a workflow which created a PR. And we're going to go and check out that PR. So let's reload this. OK, cool. So now there's a PR in our repository, which contains our Kubernetes manifests. And what does it say? Oh, OK. So it says to change the production hem release file from 7.0.3 to 7.0.4, and which is essentially what we want, right? We want to make sure that all, uh, come, all updates to our app versions happen with our explicit approval. So if I don't approve this PR, and if I don't merge this PR, even though staging is running the latest thing, production will still be on the thing which uh, we approved, approved it for. So I mean, right now, you could push another chart version, uh, 7.0.5, and that would get deployed in staging as well. But production would still be on 7.0.3, because we haven't approved anything yet. So I'm going to go ahead uh, and approve it. And Kingdom is going to go and approve it as well on his phone. Yeah. Here we go. OK, cool. Kingdom has approved it. I've approved it. So let's go ahead and merge this PR. OK, cool. So now that this PR has been merged, I'm going to go ahead and switch to production. And I'm going to reconcile the customization. OK, so now let's see where What's the status of our Helm chart in production? Okay, 
So as you can see, it has pulled 7.0.4 because we merged the PR. And what's interesting to note here is that it also says source verified, verified signature of version 7.0.4. .4. And this is because we included that verification section in the HEM release. So source controller, or rather Flux, makes sure that we always verify the signature of the artifact that we're pulling. If this signature was invalid, or if there was some kind of a problem, this uh, reconciliation would not succeed. So let's go ahead and see what is the status of a HEM release. And here you go. And yeah, now we have 7.0.4 in production. But the difference is that we explicitly approved this. Uh, it didn't happen on its own. Flux didn't pull 7.0.4 on production and, did it and deployed it. We explicitly approved this via the PR workflow. Yeah, that's it for the demo. OK. <laughs> So uh, let's, let's recap what we've just done. So this is a well-documented workflow. It's been around for a long time. Uh, the main things that we've added here today are the password lists and the uh, uh, key lists uh, parts for OCI um, and Cosign. Uh, we have the advantage of Helm tests. It's a battle-hardened workflow, and it's extensible. So you can use it on other platforms. Uh, I've heard of people using this with Azure DevOps. They use a generic webhook instead of GitHub Dispatch. Uh, so this is great. Um, but there is a negative uh, drawback if you are um, not building Helm charts. It's a rather large investment to get started, and there are some very good reasons not to use Helm in 2023. Uh, we don't need to go into them, but um, so what can you do if you don't want to use Helm? What would, uh, Flux would suggest is you could use uh, OCI repository instead of a Helm release. Uh, so we haven't documented this yet, but if you follow the workflow, uh, we'll, we'll update the docs within a couple of days, hopefully, uh, to describe this. It's very similar. It's, it's like three lines of changes. It's not really a big deal. And uh, so you get all the same benefits of keyless and identity uh, using OCI re repository. Um, but uh, so it's, it's not well documented yet. And, and there are a few other drawbacks. That's the main one is that you uh, won't have Helm test. So if you were using Helm test or uh, Helm, Helm for other reasons, the lifecycle features, the rollbacks, um, you'll be use Git for that instead. So, um, and of course, we also saw the, uh, the Semver uh, wildcard promotion method, which we used in staging. Uh, so this is portable across most of the source kinds in Flux. Uh, you, can, you can set spec.semver on a Helm chart or OCI repository or Git repository, and it will work in all of those places. And um, this is a great way uh, to get releases out faster if you're trying to publish and uh, iterate quickly without a lot of friction, uh, right? You don't necessarily need that friction unless you want it. Uh, we know we want it in this case, so that's why we demonstrated it. Uh, but uh, really, to be clear, this is a workflow for staging environments. I wouldn't recommend you do this in production without a gr great deal of ceremony applied some other way. So uh, um, one possible way would be to use flagger canaries, uh, which we're not going to go into today. We don't really have time, but... Uh, Does anyone here use flagger canaries? Okay, that's cool. Yeah, great. So. Uh, that's, that's a faster workflow. It has less friction, but it's not really for production because we want that friction for production. We want a manual approver. We want um, all of that. It's good. Uh, so as far as the um, <coughs> takeaway for users, uh, you should be using OCI for Helm everywhere you can, especially if you're using Flux. Um, and that's really the one takeaway. Uh, but uh, as a vendor, what do you do? Do you support both? Uh, do you publish uh, to your legacy and also publish OCI, or do you just go with one or the other? Um, that's not really up to us. From Flux perspective, there's no need to support both. There's no valuable work done by index.yaml for Flux, uh, but there may be other reasons that are, are not relevant to Flux in particular that uh, you should support both. So, But from an end user perspective, um, use OCI if you can, because you're uh, avoiding all that needless waste. You pay for that waste. And even if you don't pay for that waste, it's, it's environmentally friendly to avoid waste. So, um, so what if your chart vendor doesn't support OCI? Uh, well, you can talk to them and ask if, if they will do it. Uh, but maybe don't worry about it, uh, because it's really not a big deal. You know, legacy is probably not going away for, 
For years, we've heard that legacy Helm repositories would go away. There really is no sign of that happening anytime soon. So um, uh, it, it really only affects you if it affects you. Uh, so the way to know that it affects you is to monitor your performance. And we have a great monitoring guide that's been updated. Uh, there's a link to it here. Uh, so go ahead and check that out and see if you have a performance impact. If you switch, uh, it, will, it will be quick and clear. Um, so that is our talk. And we can take questions at this point. Is there a link to that journal? Uh, um, this is actually the QR code will take you to the, and, and it'll be online in a short amount. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, back to this slide here. Yeah, that's the link up at the top. That's the link you want. Yeah. So with the like, wild carding, uh, semantic versioning, and is there a way to add some sort of like a lock file similar to how like how files does with uh, generating like wild carded uh, I'm not I'm not really familiar with Helm file. I'm not sure how that works. Um, the question is, is there a, a locking mechanism? Um, to essentially generate like, a lock state and time of what is currently deployed to a cluster? There's no lock file. Okay. There's no lock file. Yeah, it's, like it's either automated or it isn't, right? If you want yeah. it to be pinned to a particular version, then you just pin it in the, in the file. So here we have a wildcard. And if you want it to pin it for a particular version for uh, like an incident or something, um, or just to implement this workflow as we've done, in production it's been to a particular version. So there's no automation. It's not automatically promoting anything unless, right, right. unless you do it. The benefit of the lock file being that uh, you have kind of like a state and time of what is currently like the generated SHA, like all the values of it as well as like the chart itself. Um, so Flux doesn't really work that way. Flux basically pulls the Helm chart and then it just deploys the Helm release. And it just makes sure it continuously reconciles against what is there in the Helm chart and what is there in the Helm release. Um, there is no concept of a log file where you are tracking what has been deployed at what time. Um, it's just, it's always fetches from the source. Uh, so like it always fetches the chart and then compares it with what's there in the Helm release, the installed release, that's all. Yeah. So Flux is not committing back. The GitHub Actions workflow is generating the commit. So yeah. I'm not I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. I was, I was it happens in CI. Flux does yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, but if you use image automation, yeah, this is a different. If you use image automation, then you can probably uh, mix and match. You can have an image policy which says that oh, you use 7.0.x, and then image auto the image automation controller commits back to and it says 7.0.4. But then you need to use the image automation APIs. Yeah, you can't just do it with the Helm control. Um, so it's basically an uh, it's an OCI artifact, right? So it's um, I think he means the OCI signature. Um, are you talking about this one? Yeah, that's just digest. Yeah. So that's just the digest of the artifact. So like it's a dot sig file. That's what cosine generates. That's the signature of your artifact. Okay, so that's generated by cosine. Uh huh. Yeah. So you you can take a look at the the workflow. You mean with PGP or like with a, with a uh -huh. yeah, there is, but we wanted to demo keyless because keyless is just easier. You don't need to uh, handle PGP key pairs, right? It's just always easier to do it without keys. Uh -huh. yeah. Flux also does not implement the PGP verification. Um, it's, it's not implemented in the uh, No, like uh, I think he means about the 
Helm, not the Helm provenance, but the, the cosine uh, private public key. You can do a cosine keyful verification. That's oh, a, you yes, can do a cosine keyful ver verification. Yeah. Yes, there are keyed and keyless workflows. Uh -huh. So you just store the. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, you could do that. You just need to store this, the key in a secret then. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's a mic there. I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Oh, Hi. Okay. Um, uh, how would someone, you know, integrate like Flagger to do the production release upgrades uh -huh. in this case? Right. So in this case, I mean, it's really two orthogonal uh, things. Um, you can use Flagger wherever. You can use it in a staging environment, or you can use it in a production environment. Flagger uh, is not tied to Git or Helm. Uh, it's completely um, Agnostic. independent of all of these things. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just about what's happening in your cluster. So as soon as the Helm release upgrade succeeds, and the deployment, so let's say the app is a deployment, and the deployment changed, like the image version changed or whatever, um, Flagger would kick into action, and it would, it would start the canary process. So it does not really matter what your Flux setups looks like. Uh, Flagger can be deployed agnostically. You, do, you don't need Flux to do Flagger, or, and you don't need Flagger to do Flux. They're completely independent, but they work very great together. Just a question on the production deployment side. So the um, deployment was approved in GitHub and then obviously the deployment happened and you didn't actually trigger anything that happened automatically. So Flux system is pulling from Git, is that, is that right, to get the latest changes? And we also merged the pull request, so. Yeah, yeah, after that. So I guess my question is that the production system still needs to have Git access, right? So you've got some Git access secrets Etc. installed yeah, in that environment. You need Git access because your original, like all your manifests are stored in a Git repository, right? So you need Git access. Right. Do you have any other way of having like an OCI backed access? For, yeah, you could that? do it in OCI repository. Okay. You could do it in an OCI repository because right now, like the default bootstrap process uses Git, uh, but you could definitely store all your manifests in an OCI repository instead of Git repository and then do it from there. We, we uh, do want to take Flux into a direction where OCI repository and Git repositories are like uh, very equivalent to each other, as in um, whatever supported by Git repositories should also be supported by OCI repositories. Okay, so if, if you did that, my question would be then, how does Flux system know to detect that change? Is it constantly polling the, the source system, like the OCI repository in that case? It would be polling at the interval, or you can set up a receiver, and the receiver would work for Git repository or OCI repository in a similar way. Is that, that like a webhook or something? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, in terms of dealing with uh, legacy uh, Helm repositories, I just wanted to call out for anyone who didn't see it, there was a lightning talk on uh, utility to proxy uh, legacy Helm repositories through OCI, so that might be a solution for that as well. Great, awesome. Thank okay. you. Hi, in terms of verifying uh, the signatures on Helm charts using Cosign, um, you said it wouldn't reconcile if the signature verification failed. Is, is that always going to fail, or is there a way to, to audit that in, instead? Uh, could you come again? I'm so sorry, I didn't catch your question. So when, when verifying OCI artifacts using Cosign, um, when, when the source controller pulls them down, you said that it, it wouldn't reconcile that artifact if the, if the signature verification failed. Is there a way to just audit that instead and output in the logs? Uh, I think there's an event uh, that's submitted. So you could look out for that Kubernetes event. Okay. But the purpose of the signature verification is to be sure that it is from the correct source. So yeah. I, I'm not sure that would be implemented okay. uh, oh. as a, a optional. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, like if the it's verification fails, then the re reconciliation will fail. There is no right. like try to verify, but it's fine if it doesn't verify. That, that's not an option.